We're going to start our 2023 projections this week. We're going to start at the top, as it were, ish, close to the top. He's probably number two, maybe number three in all of our hearts. But Bo Bichette, that's where we're going to start. Um, Karen, I don't know that it's possible to talk about Bo Bichette um, without talking about his defense. Um, and I don't want to harp on that, especially especially not yet. Um, but just generally speaking, let me ask you this question. Okay, Contract issue aside, defense aside, all of it. Is Bo Bichette an elite shortstop in Major League Baseball? When you look at all that he brings to the table, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that he is today, but he definitely has that kind of talent. And, and he can make that leap. And maybe 2023 is the year that he makes that leap. I mean, for him, being an elite shortstop mostly comes from the bat, but he's one of the better hitters in Major League Baseball. And with with, with the different changes that they've made and, and different guys that they've brought in, they've got, what do they have at, at last count, four different hitting coaches now. now they'll find someone <laughs> to, to unlock the best that each of these guys can do. And mm. I, I mean, I've I have always felt I, I'm not saying that Bo Bichette is a gold glove defender, but I've always felt that he has the talent to be at least a decent fielding shortstop. And, and I just really think he he gets ahead of himself like, a little like what they're saying about Yusei Kikuchi. I, I think he wants so badly to make every play that he rushes himself and in doing so. He, he makes errors. Mm -hmm. And if there were some way to get through his head, don't do that. Slow it down and the results will actually be better. Yeah, and that's, I've said this a million times. Baseball is the one game where you can't try harder. It, it actually <laughs> messes you up more. Um, so, Steve, let me, let me um, throw this uh, question to you as well. All things considered. Is Bo Bichette an elite shortstop, or is does is the defense still the the chink in the armor that uh, is too big to ignore? Well, I I think at a position like shortstop, I think the defense weighs heavier than an other position. Now, if he was a second baseman, um, you could say oh he would be an elite second baseman because even though he might have some limitations with his throws, um, maybe. I would say maybe his range factor is not what you'd like to see as a shortstop or even as a middle infielder. But overall, I mean, because of his bat, you have to consider him an all-star caliber um, upper upper half shortstop in Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing. I, I'm going to make the argument that he actually is an elite shortstop. Um, if, he, if he were on the – this past winter, we saw some of the best shortstops in the last – many years, um, all free agents at the same time. And we saw the money that they raked in. Bo Bichette would be no different. Um, he might not slide, slide in defensively. He may not stand up to the rest of them like a Dansby Swanson. Um, but he, he's also a far better hitter than Dansby Swanson. So, I mean, you know, the, those things do balance out. But you're right, Steve. I think the fact that it's it's the fact that he's at the shortstop position, the position he's in just has higher expectations for his glove. But that doesn't mean, though, that that glove, as Karen said, that he's not like past his prime where he's not going to be able to make some adjustments and things like that. And maybe, you know, things like bigger bases and, and all of that stuff, maybe those – throws that he thought were close last year, maybe he says, you know what, there's no chance now, uh, you know, and maybe that's something that, that he holds on to the ball a few more times um, instead of trying to beat that runner to first base and, and saving. Maybe he'll save Vladdy's groin uh, this year. Who knows? Well, that, that remains to be seen. Um, but last season, 24 home runs, only 13 stolen bases. And that's where I want to start with Karen. Uh, when we look at his projections uh, for 2023, under 20 all around the projections um, for stolen bases, given everything, given the fact, Karen, that Bo Bichette himself has said, I was going to try and steal more bases this year anyway. So 
those projections are a little light, are they not? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even even last year when they replaced Charlie Montoya with John Schneider, we already saw a little bit more of an aggressive brand of baseball, including on the bases. So, yeah, I, I can say more than that. Yeah, yeah, at least closer to his 2020 uh, one total of 25. Steve, would you would you agree that I think the 2023 is a more aggressive Bo Bichette on the base pass? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think we talked about that, you know, behind the scenes. I think we've talked about it uh, just in just in general conversations. I think he's a legit 2020 guy. It In the right circumstances, he could be a 30-30 guy. I, I, depending on where they hit him in this lineup, he could be a 30-30 guy. I mean, I really do think um, the, the pitch clock is going to force – some pitchers to hurry their deliveries and make mistakes and Bo Bichette hunts mistakes. He swings at everything. I mean, I'm surprised he's not swinging when the pitch clock first starts going on, but, but you know, he, he hunts mistakes and he's really, really good at it. So mm-hmm. I would imagine, so it would not surprise me at all if he would even uh, uh, kind of flirt with the 30 home run number. Right. Yeah. I don't disagree I- with that. Go ahead, Karen. I was just thinking, I mean, if, if Bichette wasn't a year older than Vlad Jr., I, I'd almost wonder if they were switched at birth because yeah. Bo Bichette's hitting style is so similar to that of Vlad Sr. Like, they, they, they never saw a pitch within a foot of the a plate that they didn't want to swing at. <laughs> right. And that's and that's actually a great segue into the next topic because uh, Bo Bichette continues to lead Major League Baseball and or uh, lead the league in number of hits uh, per season um, c- continuously, and he does that by making that contact. Last year, his contact rate in the zone was almost eighty nine percent. Making contact that often is insane, and outside the zone, he was making contact at sixty six percent of the time. Um, One thing that I think uh, we should probably mention when we're talking about his ability to hit is his ability to go the other way. Last year, 34% of the time he was able to go the other way. That's one of the best things I love about watching Bo Bichette hit is when he just decides, you know what, I'm going to go that way. And you can almost see it. He just says, oh, okay, there it is. So Let's start there for next season, Karen. Um, he had 191 hits in 2021, had 189 in 2022. Projected at Steamer has him at 173. Karen, <clears throat> is that justified? No. Why, why would he go down? No. No. <laughs> He's yeah, I mean, have a better <laughs> season. A first season. <laughs> Yeah, it almost makes no sense, right? When you consider how much contact he able, he's able to make and how his approach at the plate is is very much a when he's got two strikes, he definitely, you know, you can see a change in the approach. So Steve, back to you. 170, what did I say? 173 hits for Bo Bichette in 2023. He'll have that by the uh by the 1st of September. Yeah, so he's going to be up around 200. Out of curiosity, you know I hate all this steamer and Fran Graham mm-hmm. crap, but did did they give him an increased OPS and an increased uh, number of home runs over last year? Okay, so home runs, uh, he hit 24 in 2022. He's projected at 26 this coming season. OPS of 802. Um fan on steamer he is at exactly 802 for next year um all of the other projections have him below 800 well you know then i don't understand why they would project a drop in hits if they're if they're saying he's gonna you know if they're saying he's sacrificing power for average to a certain degree uh, okay it's still stupid but i mean I, I could at least understand the you know the the line of thinking there but not, yeah, he he's going to be closer to two hundred uh, than he's going to be to one seventy three. I I really don't know uh, wh- where they're getting some of these projections, especially with a lot of the changes that are there that should produce more hits for batters across the, across the board. 
Mm-hmm. And and I That's... mean, obviously, I'm looking here live on the screen. The only thing I can see is that they have him, you know, in nine fewer games uh, than he did last season. So maybe they see him missing time. But excuse me, they have him at 150 games. So. I don't see. Anyway, you're right. It doesn't make sense. And I think that's the, the, the kind of the issue. And this is what I think happens with Bo Bichette and has been happening ever since he's come up, Karen, is that I don't think he quite gets the credit that he's due. And when I stop and think about that, I'm, I'm actually more and more playing into you know his own uh, stance when it came to his arbitration, right? He's like, I just want to be paid what I, you know, what I something that reflects my value and you know what he's kind of right when you look around baseball I don't know Karen that anybody really truly appreciates the value of Bo Bichette um yeah you you might be right and it's it's kind of sad I mean is he is he in Vlad Guerrero Jr.'s shadow to a bit because Vlad just had so much fanfare but before he ever set foot on a major league field as <laughs> as a player but mm-hmm. yeah I, I mean you, you hear some of these numbers and honest to god that that's why i tell you i i don't pay a lot of attention to projections i <laughs> like yeah. where, where they come up with these numbers no come on right steve um is bo Bichette underrated undervalued underappreciated I don't think he is among his peers, but again, among the analytics crowd, there are just some players that are not projectable because they're just so unique and they're so different in their approach at the plate or even, even with pitchers, you know, they just don't follow what everyone else does. They just have their own little niche and that's how they do it. When, when you're a free swinger like Bo Bichette, It's really hard to project anything because, you know, maybe he'll hit 50 home runs because, again, if he's hunting balls and he he gets on a roll, I mean, that's possible. And so I think that the analytics people overcorrect themselves for players like Bo Bichette because he's such a free swinger and he's not fitting into that cookie cutter mold that Mm -hmm. so many ball players are right now. He's also not really a big launch angle guy. Never has been. I think that really comes from his dad and, you know, the coaching that he got coming up. So I really think that's why when you're looking at analytics or even fantasy projections, it's really hard to get the essence of Bo Bichette until you watch him day in, day out like we do. And as all Blue Jay fans do, then you get an appreciation for just what he does. And it is so different. There's nobody in the lineup that contributes like Bo Bichette does. That's absolutely correct. Even though I would, the only thing I would say is that even among the people who do watch Bo Bichette every day, I'm not sure we can come to an agreement on his, on his true real value to the team. But we're just about uh, out of time for Bo. And so, you know, we're going to do it. Um, I want to look at the number of errors that Bo Bichette will produce in 2023 just because that's what everybody's going to talk about anyway so last season 23 errors in 2021 24 let's say for the sake of argument um that he makes some improvement and i'm going to set the number of errors at 18 so that's a drop from last season of five Karen, do you take the over or the under on Bo Bichette errors with 18? Uh, okay, so the, the the over means more errors and the under means fewer errors. Yeah, Correct. I I think he's going to make a leap, so I'm going to take the under. Ooh, I love it. Steve, same question. 18 errors, Bo Bichette, over or under? I'm going to do the under, but only because of the elimination of the shift. I think Bichette is the type of fielder where when you have a shift on and he's having to overcompensate for the absence of certain players on one side of the diamond or, you know, or the other, I think that that is going to help him settle in and relax a little bit more. So I'm going to go the under as well. 
Okay, okay. Uh, I'm actually going to take the over, and that's okay. <laughs> I, I can handle 20 errors from Bo Bichette. I, I can handle that. I'll be just fine. Yes, it's frustrating in the moment, but on the whole, I would much rather have Bo Bichette than not have Bo Bichette. So I'll take the, the over on uh, that, on number of errors. Set at 18, I take the over, reminding everybody to download the BetStamp app today. Start tracking your bets across all the books. Um, you can follow winning bettors. And you, d- you can download it anywhere, the App Store or Google Play, using the code JFTC and start betting like a pro.